Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. And today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to be covering two different cases. The first case takes place in Oregon and is a case that's currently going on. There is not a lot of information out on this case, but obviously I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. And this is taking place in the Lane County area of Oregon. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, Shane Eldor Springer and he went missing last Wednesday so November 3rd of 2021 now his family had been communicating through with him throughout the day on his uh, cell phone until about roughly 7 30 a.m. on Wednesday now this is one of those cases that really I could only find three different news media articles covering the story so I'm not sure if this information is accurate, but I do believe that Shane is a building contractor. He works on uh, making homes or restoring homes or doing additions, things like that. And he was out mushroom picking or out on a walk that day and his family uh, lost contact with him somewhere in the early hours of the morning of Wednesday. Now at this time, the Lane County Sheriff's Office is investigating. They've got all kinds of teams out looking for him, and they have requested that the public doesn't get involved as, as far as searching. And the reason behind that is because many people often try and go out and help, but they can cause, uh, they put themselves in danger, especially people that have no training whatsoever in the outdoors or in wilderness or in search and rescue. There's a lot of things that need to be known and unfortunately even though it's a nice gesture for people to want to help this can often put themselves at risk and then the authorities have to worry about then possibly finding them. That said if anybody was in the Blue River Reservoir at the time and I'm going to have some maps up and some of these pictures have been of that area. This area is located in the Willamette National Forest and this is sort of in between the towns of Bend and Eugene. If you were looking at a map, it's sort of in a central location. If anyone was in and around that area of the week of last week, so that would be the week of November 3rd in the Blue Reservoir area, it is encouraged for you to contact the Lane County authorities, which I'll have that information a little bit later in the video. Now, even the search got started right away. However, it was actually his family that found discovered his truck that was just parked on the side of the road and that really is the only lead that they've had the search and rescue is utilizing a volunteer ground search and rescue canine team as well as various other units uh, drone team and various uh, aerial teams from what i could find like i said there isn't a lot of information on this case now they were able to use his cell phone location which did place him in and around the Blue River Reservoir area. However, apparently the phone was turned off on Thursday, or at least they figured that the phone had been turned off. Man, as you can see in these maps, it's a very desolate sort of area around this reservoir. It's very rugged, very mountainous, and of course the weather apparently has been getting worse and worse. So it's a very desperate situation now. Spanger is a white male. He was thought to be wearing dark pants and possibly a camouflage jacket at the time of his disappearance. However, there isn't a lot of information, like I said. And he is 47 years old, and he is from in and around the area, so he is supposed to have a pretty good knowledge of the area, and he has been out mushroom picking before in and around the area, so it is thought that he you know, knows his way around the general vicinity. And really that's all the physical information that I could find. Unfortunately, like I said, there isn't a whole lot of information, which is upsetting to me. You know, every case should get the same amount of media coverage and the same amount of attention. So I really wanted to get this video out there to help spread the word. And do you know that on that Wednesday morning at roughly 7.30 a.m., he contacted a family member and he told them that he had lost the keys to his truck and that he needed a ride home. So when they got that call, they obviously showed up to tr give him a ride. They found his truck, but he was nowhere to be located. And that's what started this whole search for him. And since that time, he has not been heard from or been seen since. 
It's interesting too because the, he is he lives in the Upper Mackenzie River area, and that is only 20 minutes away from the Blue Res Rev River Reservoir, excuse me, which is the area where he went missing. So as far as proximity to one's home, this is definitely more one of the more bizarre cases, as he literally went missing less than 20 minutes away from his own residence. But as you can see on the maps, there's just so much wooded areas in between those areas. Now, obviously, this is an open, active investigation. They're still out there looking. If you have any information regarding this case, please contact Lane County Sheriff's Office at 541-682-4150. And please share your, this story with your friends and family, especially if you live out on the West Coast, because the more people that know about it, the more chances we have of bringing him home safe, or the more chances that we have that Somebody that was out in that area at the same time may have saw something. They may have information that can help this case. Never discount any information, no matter how big or small it may be. My thoughts and prayers go out to Mr. Shane Springer, his friends and family, and everybody who's working so hard to bring him home. I hope he can be brought home soon and safe. Our next case is also a man named Shane, Shane Michael Fell. And this case happened back in 2011, and this case is very, very bizarre. Now, this case takes us to the New Orleans area, more specifically the Morel area. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'll have some maps up just to give you a clearer idea. Now, Shane is roughly six foot two inches tall. He's 200 pounds. He's got blonde hair and hazel eyes. He's got a mole under his left eye, a scar on his chin. He does have some acne scars, apparently. He was last seen wearing blue jeans, a white long sleeve dress shir shirt, and black dress shoes. And he w you generally wears a cloth-like uh, bracelet, and he wears contact lenses. Now, on this day, June 10th of 2011, Shane had been out playing pool with some friends and his brother, Brett and he was heading home and he got into an accident right at the intersection of River Road and Barataria Boulevard. Apparently he lost control of his dark blue-green Saturn. It flipped over at least once and came to a rest upside down in a ditch. Uh, one of his shoes was apparently found alongside of the vehicle. However, right after the accident he was conscious enough and you know alert enough to call his brother and let him know what had just happened both his brother and emergency services were on the scene within 30 minutes of the accident however shane was no longer there so they believe that he either exited through the window and may have sustained more injuries and according to his mother terry fell she said that he's just lost and he probably hit his head and doesn't remember who he is or where he is for that matter. What's even more bizarre is that after that initial phone call, his brother had called him back just to make sure he was okay, and Shane seemed coherent, he seemed okay, and they didn't think anything of it. They just thought they'd get there, take him to the hospital, even if they didn't even think he might not need it at the time. But then after they got there and saw the scene, there was a shattered window and they, like I said, assumed that he probably had just crawled out one of the windows and went to get help himself. But days and days and weeks passed and he still has not been seen or heard from to this day. Shane was studying jewelry and metalwork at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. So they thought at first he might have gone there. So they went there and looked around the campus, talked to different people at the campus, his friends, no one had seen them. He lived in Harvey, Louisiana, and was actually employed as a senior technical advisor for Verifone at, during the time of his disappearance. So obviously they checked there, no leads came up there. And unfortunately, the, he, they believe that since they couldn't find him there and the family thinks that maybe he suffered uh, memory loss during the accident, which again is sort of bizarre too because when he talked to his brother right after the accident he seemed fairly coherent he didn't seem like there was any type of memory loss i mean he remembered who his brother was that doesn't mean he couldn't remember where he was 
However, his family believes that he may have tried to return to Savannah, Georgia, and that's where he had been living for years before he had moved back for, to Louisiana. So it's, it's very bizarre. I mean, the fact that he just sort of vanished into thin air after getting in this accident, although New Orleans is a big place and it's, I know that there are a lot of dangerous areas depending on where you are and the area where he got in the accident isn't that far from the Mississippi River so it's possible he could have wandered down to the river by mistake I mean who knows it's but it really the accident site is wasn't that far from where he lived so it's possible something could have happened that he was walking back to try and get home and something occurred on was his way back it's hard to say there's not a lot of other information in this uh, report but then again you know I know that there are some dangerous areas of New Orleans and I know that his family has put up a ten thousand dollar reward for any information leading to finding him or information about his whereabouts like they said if there's anybody that knew him from the Savannah Georgia area and may have seen him uh, you are asked to please contact the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office. They are the investigating agency. So if you have any information regarding the whereabouts of Shane Bell, please contact the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office at 504-364-5300. Once again, Shane went missing on June 10th, 2011 after getting into a car accident in Marrero, Louisiana. He is a white male. He is roughly six foot two inches tall, 200 pounds. He's got blonde hair and hazel eyes. He's got a mole under his left eye, a scar on his chin, and some acne scars. And he is wearing blue jeans, was wearing blue jeans, and is usually wearing cloth jewelry of some kind. My thoughts and prayers go out to both of these men, and I just hope that they can be brought home to their loved ones one day soon, one way or another. All right, everyone, that's the end of today's video. Please be respectful in the comments if you do choose to leave them. Thank you so much for watching. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. And I will see everybody in the next one. Take care. Hey, guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end. And I just wanted to reiterate about the merch calendars. So they should the new batch should be arriving by Thursday or Friday of this week. Um, I ordered them last week and <clears throat> excuse me, the estimate said that they should be in by this week. So all of you, you that have been ordering them, I've kept your names all set and ready. I've got the envelopes all set up and they will ship out the day that I get them in. So not to worry there. And if you do want to purchase one, if you haven't, please look in the description uh, of this video or any of my past videos and you can pay by Venmo would be the preferable way for now. Uh, just because of PayPal giving it a little hard time, but I'll have the links. You can just click on it, $17. Just make sure you send your name and address. You can use PayPal too, but if you do use PayPal, uh, I guess what PayPal told me was you need to use uh, your computer, not the app. And there's a button that says something like completed or payment completed or because they're holding all these funds. So everyone that's bought a calendar, and paid with PayPal. I still haven't been able to withdraw any of those funds for a month and it's just due to some security measure. I guess they have it. I don't know. Who knows? Also, the winners of the fanny pack still have not gotten in touch with me and it's been several weeks now and I've announced their name several times. So I'm going to be drawing new winners if I don't hear from you by tomorrow. So everybody look out for that and I will be announcing the new winners at the end of tomorrow's video or th uh, Thursday's video. If you guys have any questions or comments or case suggestions, please leave me an email. And I want to thank everybody who's done a donation or bought a calendar. I just thank you so much for all your kind words and kind support. It means so much to me. And sorry about my voice in this video. I am losing my voice a little bit. I'm not sick or anything. It's just from all the talking. So apologize for that, guys. See you in the next one.